Okay, I think we might kick off. Welcome everyone. My name's Ted Parrish. Uh, I'm the host of today's webinar um, that will provide you with information on drought reform. Um, for those of you that have seen the media announcements that have come out in relation to this and heard from your industry groups, uh, you'll know it's a bit of a, a watershed moment. Uh, and some of these reforms that are um, uh, probably been two or three decades in the making. Um, just to let everyone know that's being uh, that's on the webinar today that the webinar is being recorded. Um, so for those of you that uh, have registered um, and are attending today, you'll be able to go back in through a link uh, that we'll send out after the webinar, and you'll be able to look uh, or review the webinar if you need to. Um, the webinar will also be posted uh, on YouTube at a later date. Um, so for people that couldn't join us today, it'll be available on YouTube. I'd just like to uh, do a welcome to country. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land and for those of us that are located uh, in the Brisbane area. Um, this is the land of the Yagara and the Turrbal people. And I want to pay uh, my respects to Elders past, present and emerging. Uh, today's webinar, we have uh, a number of fantastic speakers that will provide you with a, a range of information. Janine, could you just pop the um, that slide up, please, if that's OK? Thank you very much. So Dave McRae uh, is well known to us all. And I'll introduce Dave uh, a little proper just before his session. Dave's going to talk to us uh, about a climate forecast uh, the drought status of Queensland as it is currently. Uh, then Jeff Bainish. Uh, Jeff's going to talk to us about a farm business resilience plan um, and how you complete a plan and the key components of that. Uh, Cherie Finney will talk to us uh, about QRider and the different forms of assistance that are available through QRider now. And then we've got two of our industry experts, so Karen George from Growcom and Ian Atkinson from Nursery Growers Industry of Queensland. So Karen and Ian are here to, to basically uh, reaffirm, I guess, what the Farm Business um, Resilience Program is about and how they can assist their members to prepare a Farm Business Resilience Plan. Okay, a little bit more about all our speakers, as I said, just before each of their individual sessions. Uh, just now a quick sketch, I guess, of uh, drought reform and how we've got to where we are today. So essentially, uh, the purpose of today's webinar is to outline to people uh, how you can apply for the new drought assistance measures. Uh, the drought, the latest drought program review uh, was undertaken by Charles Burke uh, and Ruth Wade in 2018. Uh, Ruth and Charles conducted a heap of regional visits, uh, nine, sorry, in fact, um, and met with uh, producers and growers right around Queensland during those visits. And the outcome of uh, those meetings essentially forms the drought reforms that we're seeing today. Uh, the unequivocal uh, responses from the meetings that Charles and Ruth conducted was that uh, drought assistance needed to move uh, to a more proactive stance and provide uh, producers and growers with assistance for preparing for uh, and planning for drought. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Well, that, we've got three components to that. Uh, as I said, the big thing that, uh, or the key difference um, with the drought reform program is that it's now available to a whole range of different growers and producers that it wasn't or isn't uh, available to under the drought relief assistance scheme. Uh, and that's a watershed moment, I believe, um, in Queensland and, and Queensland's drought policy. Uh, and a number of people have been working on that for a long period of time. Uh, if I've got if we could just have uh, the next slide, please, Janine, on slide three, if that's OK. OK, so the drought reform measures uh, essentially are in three tiers, as I touched on. So we've got uh, the first tier there is uh, forms of assistance available for drought preparedness, uh, and they're tied to the Farm Business Resilience Plan. 
uh, that Jeff's going to talk about in his presentation. So there's three uh, essential components to that, the farm management grant, the drought preparedness grant, and the drought uh, ready and recovery loan. And Cherie's going to talk to those uh, in a lot more detail. Uh, for producers and growers, when they're in drought, um, there's the emergency drought assistance loan and the drought carry on loan. Uh, the, the drought carry on loan is a loan of up to 250k, and the drought uh, emergency drought assistance loan is a loan of up to $50,000. Uh, once we move into drought recovery, there's the drought ready and recovery loan. And again, that's up to 250K. So you can see there's some uh, substantial amounts of money um, that are available to producers uh, to assist them in drought preparedness during drought and in terms of drought recovery. So there's a, a three step process. If I could just have the next. Thank you, Janine. You're well ahead of me. Um, so essentially, there's three key steps in terms of this, and I'll I'll reaffirm this a little bit later on because it's important to um, to uh, remember this when we move into our question and answer session. Uh, step one is really the farm business resilience plan, uh, and and how you prepare that, whether you do it internally uh, within your own organisation or your own business, or whether you seek some outside assistance in being able to do that. Uh, Cherie. We'll talk about that in a little more detail. Uh, I would then encourage you to review the guidelines um, and you may then want to go back and look at the farm business resilience plan and the and the words that you've put down within that plan and and uh, and you may or may not want to update it. Uh, and then the third step is obviously uh, submit your application to QRider uh, and they'll take you through uh, the loan application process from there. So that just provides a bit of an update uh, on drought reform, um, applying for uh, applying for the loans, approaching Q Rider. I'd now like to uh, introduce Dave McRae. Dave's just going to help set the scene a little bit, I guess, about uh, drought the drought status currently. Um, Dave has an extensive uh, work history within the department in climate science and working with producers to manage their climate risks. Over the last few years as the state climate risk coordinator, he's been involved in the drought declaration process, as well as the assessment uh, of drought relief assistance scheme applications. Welcome, Dave. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, thanks, Ted, and thanks for the opportunity, everyone, to be here today. Uh, as we're talking about the uh, new drought resilience program moving forward in the future to help uh, producers better prepare for the next round of droughts, I just thought I'd start off with where we currently are. So the map that you're looking at there first is the uh, current drought status as of today uh, for Queensland under state government processes. So currently there's 64.7% of the land area of Queensland's drought declared. That includes 34 fully declared local government areas and three partly declared local government areas. Those part ones are Flinders, Isaac and Whitsunday. Uh, <clears throat> I've got this information off the Long Paddock website and the link to it's down the bottom of the map there. Um, it's a really good website to go and have a look at, especially as over coming weeks or months, you're looking at uh, doing your farm business resilience plan. Um, Long Paddock includes a good section on that drought climate adapt adaptation program. That is a lot of reports on how to better manage or more actively manage climate risk. Uh, and what it does do is include a section on case studies of what producers are currently doing, how it's worked for them, what they may dif do different in the future. It's just a good place to go and have a read and get some ideas for when you're doing your plan uh, so that you can fill in that section well. Uh, other sections on the Long Paddock website that are worth a look that are relatively new or you may not have looked at in some time is the drought duration report. It presents a uh, PDF report just on the local government areas of Queensland, how often they've been drought declared, how long it's been since the last drought declaration, what percentage of time they've been drought declared since uh, I think it's 1960 off the top of my head. It's a quite interesting report and um, you, when you read that, you can sort of get the idea of why the Queensland and federal government are quite keen to uh, spend some more time and effort in helping people prepare for drought. Other section that's worth a look that that presents more scientific-based information is certainly the Aussie grass rainfall pasture mapping section. 
uh, just gives you a good idea, not only where drought's developing in Queensland, but also where there's opportunity, where things are going well. And uh, the forage section uh, allows you to downscale that type of information to your property scale. So you can actually look at it, uh, put in your lot numbers on plan into the forage section, and it'll provide a number of reports for you, things such as erodible soil, drought assessments, indicative land type, etc like that so you may go that i uh, don't really need that to do that for the property you're on because you know it quite well but certainly if you're looking at expanding looking at shifting somewhere else or buying a leasing country in a different area it, it'd be a product that i'd go and have a look at just to see what it's showing up and see if that matches up with what your property inspections or uh, whatever are showing up uh, I will just point out the uh, review time for the drought status for Queensland is currently approaching. LDCs or local drought committees meet during April. Things they take into account include rainfall, pasture growth over the spring summer season, water availability, livestock condition, drought feeding, etc. like that. So if we're looking forward to any changes in this type of map, uh, we'll start to see that occur over the next one to two months. So one of the key things that local drought committees now take into account is a product called the Combined Drought Indicator, or we just call it the CDI. So it's one of the outcomes or outputs from that uh, drought review that Ted referred to from 2018-19. And one of the recommendations of that was to develop a more tailored product for Queensland, Northern Australia as a whole, although we run the maps for Australia. Uh, and it's to use a combination of rainfall, soil moisture, evapotranspiration and a satellite imagery of vegetation. We say it's produced a drought indicator, but as I've also mentioned before, you know, you can use these products to try and look for opportunities, look for where things are going well, etc. like that. The current map shows the... Uh, uh, shows the uh, output or outcome for Queensland over the last 24 months through to the end of February 2022. As you can see, much of southern parts of the state have done relatively well, um, but there's certainly that section throughout uh, central Queensland that uh, hasn't quite uh, had the same type of flow of seasons. Now, the link to the page is there. It's worth having a look. You can run maps on a one month, three month, six month, nine month, 12, 24, 48 month, uh, etc. like that. Also presents different interpretations or definitions of drought. Uh, so it's a good product, a good place to go and just have a look around, see what it's showing you, see what it uh, can uh, work for you or provide further information. The next one is, as we're talking about uh, drought or the Drought Relief Assistance Scheme coming to an end as, as uh, regions or local government areas come off the drought declared list, I will just point out that doesn't mean that all drought assistance is ceasing for the state of Queensland. Uh, there is a number of other drought assistance available for primary producers. Uh, and if you just Google Business Queensland Drought, it'll take you to the page and it has all active links to where that information is. A key one for uh, horticulture, cropping people, etc., like that, who irrigate would be the Drought Relief from Electricity Charges Scheme. That's run through your local energy provider, provides a rebate on your charges for irrigation. There's also the standard land, rent, rebates, water licence, waivers, etc., like that. Uh, well worth a look at. And you know, it's not just state ones, it's also federal government ones and even the ATO, although, you know, I don't necessarily recommend people ringing the ATO all the time. They do provide some good services for those, uh, you know, agriculture businesses that are currently drought impacted. It is worth a look. And to finish off, I just thought I'd put up the chance of getting above median rainfall for the three months of April, May, June um, 2022. Look, I know... Your interpretation, oh, well, sorry, what I should say first is currently the outlook, generally speaking, across most of Queensland is that for 60 plus percent of the state uh, is looking at above median rainfall for that three month period. Now, while for parts of southeast Queensland and certainly for parts of northeast New South Wales, it's probably not the message that some people want to hear. Those have been, you know, adversely flood impacted, etc. Those people who haven't had a good summer season may be looking for hopefully a better start to autumn and winter. And uh, based on this type of outlook, you know, somewhat hopeful that that may occur. Uh, so, as I said, the links to the uh, maps and the images and the information there are down the bottom of those pages. Feel free to go and have a look. Uh, that'll do me. Thanks, Ted. Thank you. Good on you, Dave. Thank, thank you very much. 
as everyone can see from Dave's map there, there's obviously quite a mixed bag, I guess, in terms of rainfall around Queensland over the last few months. Uh, it's probably quite uh, hard for people in southeast Queensland uh, to get their head around, um, you know, the drought conditions exist, uh, particularly in the north from probably, you know, rocky upwards uh, along the coastline uh, until you get into the wet tropics. But certainly there's some areas in central Queensland and out in the out in the northwest or whatever that are still very, very dry and are looking for rainfall. Any questions of Dave, please pop them into our uh, into our chat function today. Um, for those of you that may be uh, driving a phone or a, or a uh, an iPad, um, it's a little bit different to how we're structured, I guess, or the chat function uh, in terms of a desktop. Uh, your chat function is probably likely to be down at the bottom of the iPad or the uh, or the phone. Um, take a look in there. Uh, the questions will come through in chat, and we'll pick them up and respond to them in our question and answer session at the uh, at the end of the formal presentations. Okay, I'd now like to uh, to introduce Jeff Bainish. Uh, and Jeff's going to talk to us today about the Farm Business Resilience Plan. Uh, and also touch on a little bit uh, on the Farm Business Resilience Program as well. Uh, so Jeff commenced in the role of, uh, of Program Manager of the Farm Business Resilience Program uh, in January of this year. Uh, prior to that, he was the Facility Manager of the ex-QATC Training College Assets at Emerald. Jeff, thank you for joining us today. Welcome. Thanks, Ted. Thanks for that welcome and thank you for the opportunity to be here today. So as Ted highlighted in his introductory information, the Farm Business Resilience Plan is a critical doc document that underpins the, uh, the changing philosophy in terms of drought preparedness in Queensland. Um, so a Farm Business Resilience Plan is a plan that shows where the producer wants their operation to be in the future and how they'll manage the risks their business will face. So it, it provides an opportunity to prepare for um, future climate events. And Dave, in his presentation, has outlined a number of really good tools that we have available at our disposal these days to look at what the current climate is relative to what it has been in the past and to look at what future climate might, what the expectations are be likely to be. So it gives us an opportunity to be prepared for the future um, future droughts and also other climate extremes. So a business resilience plan should be evidence-based, incorporate relevant learnings from training and be tailored to the purpose of the business operation. It should outline an implementation approach and be monitored and reviewed regularly to respond to and manage changes and their impacts. So that very quickly, there are a number of uh, key components to the Farm Business Resilience Plan. Um, theme one is about our business. So it's descriptive information about the business. Theme two, the motivation. So what drives us? Why are we in, in this business? What do we hope to achieve from it? And what are our expectations for the future? Theme three is about our goals uh, across the range of areas. So production goals, finance goals, uh, marketing goals, human resource goals, etc. cetera. Uh, theme four is about specifically managing our risks across the broad area of risks that uh, impact primary producers. So climate and weather, biosecurity, natural resources, financial risks, marketing risks, and workplace health and safety risks are an ever-present and emerging area of risk that needs to be focused on. Um, theme five is about how we manage dry conditions and drought. Um, so these, this is an area where we're building, um, taking stock of how we manage them and, and how we might be able to do that better. Um, theme six is about our new actions and implementation plan to improve the management of these the business. So these areas are particularly important when it comes to uh, becoming more prepared uh, and resilient to future climate events, 
And these are the areas that are particularly focused on in terms of assessment of the Q rider packages that Sheree will be talking about a bit later. And theme seven is about reviewing our plan following implementation. So the only thing that we can be certain about is change. So that's the only constant really. Um, so it's essential to have a regular cycle of reviewing the plan. So there are a number of ways to, or pathways to develop a business resilience plan. Um, one option is to attend uh, training offered by the Farm Business Resilience Program, which I'll touch on briefly in a minute, and um, you'll receive some up-to-date practical information from one, two of the Farm Business Resilience Plan projects from both Ian and Karen later on in this session. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, another option is to use an existing plan that businesses might have. So we acknowledge that different businesses are on a continuum um, in terms of the degree of planning that they've done. So if people already have an existing plan that meets the minimum requirements of our template, then there's no problem using that existing plan. Or alternatively, um, you could use our plan. You could engage a professional uh, to assist and provide advice in terms of preparation of the plan. And uh, there's a grant, farm management grant available through QRider in order to uh, assist with those costs. And Sheree will be talking about that a little bit later. So some of the resources that I've touched on already, um, the Farm Business Resilience Program Industry Projects is an option uh, and it's a good option in terms of helping to develop your drought preparedness plan, farm business resilience plan. There are self-assessment checklists which basically assist to uh, provide a situation analysis of where you are now um, and also help to guide where you might be looking to be in the future. So that's a starting point, the self-assessment checklist. There's farm business resilience plan templates. So there's a generic template for a range of industries on the DAF website. And some of the farm business resilience projects have adapted that gene those generic templates to be more specific for their spe industries. And Karen may talk about this a little bit later. So there's fact sheets, videos, and other explanatory material um, available on the DAF website or, and there are also links to the industry projects. So very quickly, the Farm Business Resilience Program is a new program focusing on building the capacity of Queensland producers to prepare for and manage business and climate risks. Uh, the project's funded through the Australian Government's Future Drought Fund and the Queensland Government's Drought and Climate Adaptation Program. Uh, the program provides capacity building activities in extension to agricultural producers across Queensland in the following areas, strategic farm business management, risk management, natural resource management, and personal and social resilience. So there are six main projects within the farm business resilience program. Uh, there's the Grazing Futures Livestock Business Resilience Program, which is managed by Joe Rolf. Improving Farm Business Resilience in Queensland's Grain Systems, managed by Rod Pollins. And Dairy Farm Business Resilience Program, which is managed by Mark Bauer. So those three are DAF-led programs. There's the Family Farm Enterprise Risk and Resilience Program, which is a QFF program, managed by Kerry Battersby. It's Business Resilience for Cane Growers, Cane Growers Program managed by Chris Gillett, and Resilience Planning for Horticulture, which is managed by Karen George, who you'll hear from shortly, and that's a GrowCom project. So irrespective of the Farm Business Resilience project that you go through, there's a common framework that each of the programs follow. 
and that is beginning with a situation analysis or risk analysis. So where are we now across each of those um, main areas that influence the primary production business? And there may be some expert input associated where, with where we are currently relative to best practice. So we identify strengths and weaknesses and opportunities associated with the current situation. Come up with a formal business resilience plan. And as I said, there's an opportunity to attend training workshops or alternatively seek assistance from a consultant with through the possible use of a, a farm management grant in order to come up with um, a formal resilience plan. Then the final step is implement, implementation, monitoring and review of the business resilience plan. And hopefully, or our goal very much is uh, about more efficient, resilient agribusinesses. So we look forward to the opportunity to work with you to enhance the environmental, economic and social resilience of your business. Um, there's a great group of people that are involved in participating um, or managing the Farm Business Resilience Program. Um, there's six main projects, 15 organisations delivering. So there's a lot of help available and support to assist people on this journey towards improved business resilience. So that's about it all for me, Ted. Uh, I'll be around for the question and answer. So thank you once again for the opportunity to be here today. Good on you, Jeff. Thank you very much. And talking about fantastic people that are being involved in the in the program, we're just about to hear from two of them. Um, so before we get into Karen George's presentation and followed by Ian Atkinson's, for those of you that have joined late, uh, please uh, be aware that we're recording uh, the webinar today. And if you've got any questions uh, for our panel, uh, which we'll host after we've he heard from Sharif Inni from QRider, please post those into the meeting chat. Uh, we'll review those and then we can discuss them and direct that question uh, to the right uh, person within the panel. OK, I'd like to introduce Karen George to everyone. Um, Karen is based in far north Queensland now. Uh, has been working for Grove Comp since 2017. Over that time, Karen has held a number of roles ranging from uh, a corn officer, um, a workforce development manager um, from uh, Grow, within Growcom for their projects. Uh, and more recently, her focus has been on farm business resilience. Karen has worked with uh, primary producers uh, to assist them in all aspects of business planning for the last 25 years across uh, much of Queensland, including northwest Queensland and the Burnett regions. Karen also has also run her own businesses and has qualifications in business, economics and systems management. Thanks, Karen. Thank you for joining us today. Look forward to uh, hearing what uh, growcom has been up to, I guess, in and uh, the Hort 360 program. Over to you. Thanks, Ted. Thanks, Jeff. Um, and great to hear from you too, Dave. Um, just to explain, I, just moving on from uh, what Jeff was explaining, with the um, Farm Business Resilience Program for horticulture, we're using the Best Management Practice Program for horticulture, which is Hort360. Uh, the Hort360 um, program includes uh, the the Farm Business Resilience module, and it also includes a business resilience template, which will be partially pre-completed for you with your property details, et cetera, as you provide that when you log into Hort360. So the information, where to get onto um, this, I guess, tailored farm business resilience plan, um, the, the what is essentially a checklist to help you 
to complete the resilience planning and if you are to be looking at applying for QRider funding or other financial assistance, um, we have got it all in there in the Hawk 360 program. Um, you'll find the link on the GROWCOM webpage and I will be putting that link into the chat a little bit later, but it is, um, you'll see it in growcom.com.au. Um, I'll just add that in the link now. That you'll see will lead you to information about um, various farm business resilience programs. And you can also get access to this through AgriLearn, which is agrilearn.com.au. And I'll just type that now as well. So you'll see these come up in the chat. AgriLearn.com.au also provides you with the introductory um, information about farm business resilience. It also has direct links to those industry groups represented through Queensland Farmers Federation. So um, that's including the um, nursery growers, uh, which is what Ian's going to be talking to you about, the um, cotton, the turf, um, the intensive livestock of uh, cropping. Uh, we also have cropping and we also have dairy links there and sugarcane as well. Uh, the cane farmers link is in there as well and um, poultry and pigs are through the Queensland Farmers Federation QFF one as well. So you'll see all those links on there. Uh, the Growcom uh, link will then, when you click on horticulture, that will take you to the Best Management Practice Program, Hort 360. When you go into that, you, you log in. If you haven't already been using Hort 360, which is a whole farm um, approach to um, assessing gaps and, and risks for your business, if you haven't already been using that, you can apply for a login and um, and we will call you and, and um, work with you to ensure that you've got your all the information you need so that it does pre-populate that resilience plan that you will be then completing for QRider. So um, please go in and log in. Um, the benefits of doing so is we have got the tailored um, plan there which is which has been developed um, using the information and working in collaboration with um, Department of Agriculture and Fisheries and QRider um, and then also the um, the template to be able to apply for the QRider grants and loans which uh, Cherie will describe further on. Uh, please put your questions into the chat. I can see um, Anthony's got a question there already, um, which is great to see. Um, and um, Anthony is, I guess, um, well, we've already been talking earlier as well, so I'm happy to see that you're on there, Anthony. Hello. And um, so other people, please put your questions um, or any information you need into the chat. I'll leave it at that for now. Thanks, Ted, and um, and then Ian can talk about um, what he'd like to talk about from nursery's point of view. Good on you. Thank you very much, Karen. Uh, a couple of late starters. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, we're using the chat function today, so if you've got some questions, please, as Karen said, pop your questions into the chat, uh, and we'll deal with them with the Q and A. Uh, deal with them, sorry, in the Q and A section very shortly. Uh, I'd now like to welcome Ian Atkinson. Um, from the North Nursery Growers Industry of Queensland. Ian has more than 30 years experience in Australian agriculture, specialising in plant nursery production, irrigation and environmental management. As the former industry development manager for the Nursery Industry Association sorry, of Australia, is the co-author of several publications and training packages about water management in nursery. Ian is the CEO of uh, Nursery and Garden Industry Queensland, which is, as we know, a billion dollar industry and growing every day. Ian, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, welcome. I'm sure the, uh, there's a number of people online today that are uh, looking forward to hearing your presentation. Yeah, well, thanks for the opportunity. That, uh, that sounds OK, I presume. All, all good, Ian, loud and clear. All right, so um, just to in indicate where we fit, so uh, NGIQ is delivering on part of the package of um, projects that the Queensland Farmers Federation has um, 
taken on. So we're a subcontractor to QFF. Uh, a couple of key things here for anybody that's involved in the game. The first thing is uh, uh, obviously you have to have primary producer status, so it's not applicable to people in the retail side of things. The other thing is we're taking a slightly different focus uh, on the drought preparedness program and that's for a couple of reasons, one of which is that uh, it's pretty harsh in the containerized nursery business. If you have no water, then three days later you don't have a business. There is no uh, adaptation to uh, not having any water, you just run out of business. And the best example there is that during the millennium drought, there are about 15 businesses just went uh, belly up on the Sunshine Coast alone uh, from lack of water. So we're starting from a viewpoint in terms of looking at um, uh, what can be done in the business in terms of uh, getting better prepared for future droughts. So the focus there is on are there ways and means that we can either uh, increase the supply of water or uh, decrease reliance on irrigation water by being more efficient. And we're fortunate that we have a number of um, industry best practices in this regard. Um, that we can guide people down in terms of uh, uh, reducing their reliance on water. We'll absolutely step people through the pl whole planning process, um, but the approach I'm taking at the moment is let's have a look at what is the, what's the viability in terms of either increasing the amount of water that you might have available come drought or reducing your daily usage of it so that you can stretch it out longer um, before we necessarily go through those, uh, uh, those processes. Uh, again, not, not only do we have the uh, national industry best practice in this regard, but we also have uh, many years experience proving that this can, uh, this can work. Uh, I also think there's an opportunity uh, for industry to adopt some ideas that have been around for a while, like reducing um, evaporation from farm dams by um, putting uh, shade cloth over the top, for instance, is one, one good example. The fact that the government money is available to help assist that's a, a, a very positive step in our mind. So I'll probably leave it at that, um, uh, Ted, but uh, quite happy to take uh, questions if there's anybody from industry online. Good on, Ian. Thank you very much. So participants today, you've heard uh, from Ian, Karen and Jeff around the farm business plan farm business resilience plan, sorry, and also the program and the range of assistance that is out there and available across uh, a, a whole range of different agencies and organisations to help you prepare a farm business resilience plan. If you've got any further questions, certainly pop them into the chat, as Ian said. Uh, we've got a couple uh, coming up there already, which is great. All right, to getting down to the pointy end of it now in terms of what assistance is out there. Um, uh, we're hearing now from Cherie Finney from Q Rider. Uh, Cherie is the manager for natural disasters and drought. So as, as Dave indicated and I indicated earlier, despite how much rain, I guess, the, and flooding that we've had in southeast Queensland, there are certain areas within a number of large areas within Queensland that are still impacted by drought. So Cherie's uh, got half a head, I guess, or half a thought processes in uh, in drought at the moment and the other half in uh, in flooding and natural disasters. Uh, she does it with aplomb. She does it easily. Um, so Q Rider has been, uh, sorry, Q Rider, Cherie's been with Q Rider since April 2019. And prior to um, her time in Q or joining Q Rider, uh, she was an agribusiness credit analyst uh, with a commercial bank. And prior to that, she was a program manager for Good Shepherd Microfinance, uh, which administered and delivered microfinance uh, and financial inclusion to disadvantaged people. Cherie loves dogs, otters and scuba diving and uh, and is passionate about helping people. So welcome, Cherie. I'm sure there'll be um, plenty of questions for you after this presentation. Well done. Thanks for joining us. And Thanks so much for having me as well. So I'm just going to share my screen because I do have a PowerPoint presentation to um, share with you all. Um, so 
there we go. Queensland um, Drought Support. So um, it's, this is just a little bit about us, Curata. We are a specialist provider of financial assistance programs and we do loans, grants and a whole heap of rebates. There's a, probably a couple on the screen there that you recognise, the First Start Loan, Sustainability Loan and, of course, our disaster recovery stuff. But there's a few others that we do. Um, our farm debt services um, is a really important uh, portion of our business and, um, of course, the grants that I'm going to have a chat to you about today as well as the loans. So let's start right at the beginning. So to preempt all of this, you don't have to be drought declared to receive any of this funding that I'm about to explain to you. So the first place to start is that farm management grant. Now, I know that everybody, um, Ian and Karen and Jeffrey, all reiterated how important the Farm Business Resilience Plan is. Now, that is the keystone to this entire program. The absolute most important part is the Farm Business Resilience Plan. So this farm management grant is um, in place there to assist you to get some advice about how to best um, produce your Farm Business Resilience Plan. So it's um, a 50% rebate up to $2,500 on the cost of seeking eligible professional advice so then you can go forward and produce a farm business plan so it doesn't necessarily limit you to only going to get advice from one place you can get them from several places so whether that's you know the the, the part that you know Jeff we Jeff was talking about whether that's about occupational health and safety risk about you know um, about business risk or financial risk as any of those things it doesn't have to be drought specific but um, it is about all of those um, just getting some advice go forth and um, create that farm business resilience plan. If I look at the eligibility quickly on those, you do need to be a primary producer. Now, um, when it comes to this funding, a primary producer is defined as um, an entity that um, obviously in a primary industry, but derives their gross income, more than 50% of that derived from the primary industry, and spend more than 50% of their total labour on that industry, on that primary industry as well. You have to have already paid for the adv uh, professional advice. So this is more like a rebate, I guess, than a technical grant. And you have to have received that eligible professional advice prior to the 11th of November 2021. Uh, sorry, but uh, not prior to, so after 11th of November last year, which is when this opened. So you could go and um, get the advice, pay for the advice today, and then go and get a grant. At this point in time, there is no closure date for the farm management grant. They are open, um, you know, uh, I guess indefinitely for, we don't have a closure date. So it could be three years, could be five years, we don't know, but there is no closure date. You have to have received the eligible professional advice from a suitably qualified advisor. Now, we don't have a list of advisors that you can go to because um, the the farm business resilience grant, the, the farm business resilience plan is so diverse. There's so many sections within that that you could go and get advice from. So limiting that would be, you know, it, it wouldn't be, it uh, wouldn't assist you. We just have to make sure that you're not the one paying yourself for the advice and that the person that you're receiving the advice from doesn't have any conflict, conflict of interest. They're not employed by um, the business. They're not a part owner in the business. And there is that arm's length in there. So then moving on to the big one that um, has been open for a little while now, but not very long, the Drought Preparedness Grant. So once again, you don't have to be drought declared to receive these funds, um, but this offers a grant of up to $50,000 or 25% as a co-contribution to assist you on un undertaking any on-farm capital improvements. They have to be permanent capital improvements that improve the drought preparedness of your property. So the whole idea is basically that the Farm Business Resilience Plan in theme six, what Jeff was talking about, about the new actions and implementation to, um, you know, to improve the business, if that's um, specifically around drought preparedness, that's where this comes into play. You have your co-contribution and you have a grant of up to $50,000 or 25% of that costs of involving for that um, activity. So uh, the Curator Sustainability Grant can actually make up the other part of the co-contribution, but it could also be an overdraft, funds that you've already got, um, your you know traditional financier, or one of the um, or 
there is one of the um, loans that I'll be speaking of in a few moments that could also form part of that co-contribution. So a really good, um, it's in the guidelines. So what I'm going to read out to you now is a little bit dry, but it's um, it's an important, you know, it's an important part of this. Um, it actually tells you what is and what isn't available for this. So what the drought preparedness grant can be used for. So I am just going to read this and I apologise, but um, pipes, tanks and water troughs, dam construction and or expansion, the drilling of a new war, a new working bore, water conservation infrastructure and equipment, including more efficient irrigation, water pumps, power supply used toward to use to run those water pumps, storage mixing and feeding out equipment for grain, fodder, molasses and other supplements, grain storage and equipment that improves the ability of the business to manage drought, any freight component to purchase and install equipment or infrastructure, any consumables, including your own fuel for, for machinery that could be used in relation to the drought preparedness project and any contractor costs to install that infrastructure. So on the flip side of that, what the grant cannot be used for, um, it can't be used for salary and wage expenses that are not associated with the drought preparedness project. Um, any purchase of machinery and equipment to complete the capital works or motor vehicles, dry hire of your own machinery is not covered or owner operator costs. The replacement repairs or maintenance of any existing infrastructure, um, the conducting of any feasibility studies, costs associated with drilling or, the, or a dry bore or test bore, um, or refinancing or restructuring any existing loan arrangements. I know that was a bit dry, sorry. But um, what you must have to be eligible, you have to demonstrate that at least that that the, the primary producer is the same, exactly the same as it was with the farm management grant. 50% of gross income needs to come from the industry, from the primary industry, and 50% um, or more of your labour needs to be spent on that farm. You have to have a demonstrated an ability to provide the remaining contributions. Basically, because it's a co-contribution, we give you $50,000. You need to prove that the other money for that activity is readily available. Demonstrate that any regulatory approvals have to be obtained. So you can't just go and dig a dam or a, um, you know construct a shed. You do need to show that those um, approvals are in place. And you do need to present a farm business resilience plan that is satisfactory. So what you must not have, you cannot have made an application for DRAS funding in the last six month period, which in the horticultural sector isn't really going to apply, but that does include the um, freight subsidies and the emergency water infrastructure rebate. And um, you can't have re previously received a drought preparedness grant for the same project. You can receive multiple, but it is only up to $50,000 in that 25% um, costing. And um, it's up. It, it you have you've got fifty thousand dollars in a five year period. So you can do you know five different small activities and for you know, receive the the drought preparedness grant for ten thousand dollars each time, and that is perfectly acceptable. Or just one activity for the full fifty thousand dollars, as long as you present that farm business resilience plan and it's really clearly outlined what activities you're doing and the, the grand picture like the great the, the biggest scheme needs to be involved in that so then we move on to the loan component of um, the program so we have the drought ready and recovery finance loan so this one here is um, up to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars and this one here um, can absolutely be used as that that co-contribution for the drought preparedness grant. So it's exactly the same for eligibility. You have to have 50-50, the 50 um, gross income and the 50 labour. You have to have the projects that have to be identified in that farm business resilience plan to re, um, improve the drought readiness um, and you know, preparedness for drought. Um, or the recovery prospects of the primary production business, which will be also outlined in that FB, the Farm Business Resilience Plan. You have to show um, prospects of viability or um, have the ability to repay that and service that loan. Um, security is will be, will be taken over that loan, but that's sort of something that you have a discussion with the team um, after application. You have to demonstrate that um, 
the, the plan, what you're doing is satisfactory. It's exactly the same as the um, farm business resilience plan. It all needs to correlate. It all needs to make sense. Um, and that plan needs to be put in at application for this particular loan. So then we move on to the drought, emergency drought assistance loan. So this one here, uh, you don't have to be drought declared again, but um, you do have to um, be significantly affected by drought. Um, and this is for just your carry on funding. So employee wages, paying creditors, paying lease payments, rates, things like that, buying fuel, all of the things that go into just sort of working capital, everyday running. The, the, um, this one is only $50,000, but um, it is completely interest free and you do have a two year um, holiday of paying. So you don't pay anything interest or, or principal back in the first two years. So being completely interest free, um, it's, you know, uh, for people in that emergency situation is, um, you know, very attractive and very helpful. Once again, it is, um, very similar eligibility for this. Um, you do have to demonstrate the primary production business again, but you, the difference with this one, you do have to have carried on the primary production business for at least 12 months, which is slightly different from the ready and recovery one. Um, I have to have take reasonable precautions to minimise the effect of drought to the business. You have to demonstrate that you can service the loan and you also have to um, demonstrate that significantly financially affected by drought. Once again, you do not have to be drought declared though. Um, you also have to, the next point here says, demonstrate that the primary production business cannot support carry on from existing cash. So what that means is you do have to use your own cash uh, reserve. So, you know, um, that, you know, you've used the limit of your overdraft, that you've, um, you know, accessed your um, FMDs and things like that. Then the farm business resilience plan, as with all of this, is the keystone to the entire program. But with this one, we also understand that emergency drought assistance is, um, you know, something that you need quickly and in, in a hurry. And a farm business resilience plan isn't something that you just um, do overnight. It is a plan that you need to get advice and, and um, external help with. So we do understand, but we do re require to see one within a reasonable period after application. Then the next one is the drought carry on finance loan. Now this is very, very similar to the emergency loan, except this one is a lot bigger. It is up to $250,000 in total, but this one does have a concessional interest rate. Um, so it's slightly different. And unlike the emergency, which is a seven year period, this one and the ready um, the ready recovery finance loans are a 10, up to a 10 year period of payback. So this one again is for that capital expenses. So just working capital, wages, paying your creditors, fuel, um, lease repayments, rates, things like that. Anything to carry on your business is what these funding this funding can go towards. Again, eligibility is um, exactly the same as for the emergency one. Um, demonstrate primary production have to have been in business for at least 12 months, um, you know, have to be adversely impacted by drought, can demonstrate that you can service the loan, all the things the same, and exactly the same in the last one. The Farm Business Resilience Plan needs to be um, given to QRider a reasonable, with, within a reasonable time period of application. So then um, what I'm going to quickly have a chat about um, is how to get in contact with us. So it's pretty easy. You just go to qrider.qld.gov.au and then in the Your Region section of our website, just pop in your postcode and um, your regional area manager will come up. There's 11 across the state and um, all of their details will be on there. Um, phone number, email, even physically where their offices are and a little bit about each individual um, in, in the region. So then they could contact us. Um, please, under no circumstances, should you ever self-assess regarding your eligibility, just, just get in contact with us, talk it through, tell us what your situation is and if, if and we can provide, you know, um, assistance and some guidance. Um, otherwise, we can point you in the right direction. Our phone number is 1-800-623-946 or um, you can email us at contact underscore us at qrider.qld.gov.au. Um, we're all really friendly and we're always willing to assist where we can. Um, 
that's the end of my particular little um, slideshow. But what I thought that I might quickly run through with in, in regards specifically to the um, the drought preparedness grant, because obviously these loans are brand new and the whole program is very, very new. And I think that the best way to, um, I guess, learn is to make mistakes. So if you can learn from other people's mistakes, then I guess it's pretty smart. So I might just run through a quick, um, rather than a case study as such, I might run through some quick decline reasons as to why the drought preparedness grant um, may have been declined. Um, the most common reason is because that farm business resilience plan is not acceptable. Um, it's either not complete, it's written prescriptively, or like um, you know, like what Jeff was saying that it, it's this program that you know it's it's really holistic and important approach to your business, and the um, the grants and the loans are a means and ways for you to achieve what's in your plan. So if you write the plan with the goal of getting the um the grant it doesn't always work that can be looked at more prescriptively so um the the plan could be seen as inadequate or you know not complete or lacking correlation between what the proposed works are that found business resilience plan and drought preparedness so that needs to be there um another thing that um is really common that people just don't um, provide all of the information. So we do need to see a copy of financials and income tax returns um, and all of those sorts of things um, and not being com not being um, contactable for us to follow up on those things. We do see that could happen sometimes. Um, another one is that uh, a part of the eligibility is that you haven't com you haven't started or commenced the work that you, you do have to wait for approval to come through before we can be, you know before you can start that so purchases already made or tax invoices that have already been um, received would indicate that um, those works have started quotes are fine and um and, and you know orders that haven't generated a tax invoice and you haven't paid anything towards them would also technically be fine but um yeah anything that's already commenced started or paid for would would not be eligible um, replacing existing infrastructure is something that would be declined as well and um, having no clear drought mitigation strategy for any of those but um, I guess the next step is for me to join you in a few moments with the Q&A and I'm sure that there's plenty of questions coming through so look once again thank you very much for having me and um, I'll see you all soon thank you very much Sheree Great presentation, a lot, a lot for uh, the webinar participants to take on board. Uh, we've got some good questions coming through, so hopefully uh, we'll be able to get the answers uh, from our speakers today and share that information back with you. Uh, just before we move into the question and answer session, I just thought it might be worthwhile uh, just to go back over uh, and do a little bit of a recap just to as I said, there's been a lot of information, so hopefully a quick recap will provide us uh, with a little bit of clarity about how the program is going to work moving forward. OK, so in terms of the new programs, thank you, Janine. Um, we have the drought preparedness uh, section uh, and to access that, uh, that assistance, you need to develop a farm business resilience plan and we've heard uh, you know, from Jeff and a number of the speakers today about how you do that, how, uh, what type of assistance and information is out there. Uh, Cherie provided some examples of uh, uh, reasons for decline, I guess, of a farm business resilience plan. It really is one of those things, you know, if, you, if you're not going to spend the time um, to put into the plan, um, then you're unlikely to get it approved initially. You need to put some time in, think about it uh, and cover uh, answer the questions and put in as much information as you can. Uh, QWriter will let you know if you've got too much information or it's not relevant, so you're better off, uh, to use my words, <laughs> overcook it than not, than, than underdo it. So that farm business uh, resilience plan and the drought preparedness gives you access to those uh, three forms of assistance there, as you can see. Uh, once you're in drought, uh, there's the uh, there's emergency drought assistance and the drought carry-on 
uh, loans that are available to you, 50K and 250K respectively. And then once you move into drought recovery, you've got the drought ready uh, and recovery loan, again, up to 250K. Okay, next slide, please, Janine. So as I indicated earlier, it's essentially a three-step process. Uh, one is take a look at the farm business resilience plan, look at the information that you're going to um, be required to put into the plan, uh, have a chat to people within your business, external to your business, uh, and spend some time in preparing the plan. Uh, the next step is review the guidelines, um, take a look at it, uh, check out exactly what you're required to do to submit the plan. Uh, and access the different types of assistance because you may have to go back and review review and update your plan just to make sure that you um, meet the guidelines. And then step three, the logical next step is make application through to, uh, through to Q Rider. Okay, we've moved into the into the formal panel discussion now. Uh, as I said, we've got some great questions uh, for those of you that may have joined us late. Uh, we're using the chat function. Um, so if you do have some questions and there's some that have already um, popped up uh, there, which is fantastic. If you could just post those questions uh, in the in the chat, that would be great. Uh, we've now got a little bit of time to unpack those questions and work through them. Uh, and we're joined by the rest of the panel. Thank you everyone today for, uh, for being part of the Q&A. I'll just go back up and uh, I'm not sure whether everyone can see these questions. So there's been a few that have been answered, which is fantastic. Uh, but I'll just read some and Karen touched on one uh, from Anthony. Thank you, Anthony. I'm a banana grower from Minnesvale and this area is not drought declared as, as Dave uh, showed on his um, drought declarations map. Um, does this mean that I cannot apply for a drought preparedness grant? And the answer is no. Um, that's the beauty of, of drought reform and the new packages. Uh, essentially, you do not need uh, to be drought declared to be able to access that uh, that assistance. Okay, next question. Uh, for those of you uh, that do have access to the chat there, um, Karen and Ian have both put some, some links in there um, to, to information, so thank you very much. Karen and Ian for doing that. Uh, Rebecca, thank you. Uh, hi all, does a producer need to be a member of NGIQ or GrowComp to participate? No, they don't. Now, uh, there's a whole range of different resources out there as we've heard today. Um, it's not tied to industry membership at all. Question for you, Sheree. Could dam covers, um, cropping shade structures, and controlled environment greenhouses, uh, which will be aimed at improving water use efficiency, be a scope for a drought preparedness grant? Um, as long as that FBRP show, or the Farm Business Resilience Plan, sorry, acronym, <laughs> the Farm Business Resilience Plan showed, you know, the correlation between those proposed works um, um, and, you know, and, and drought preparedness, then it would absolutely be something that could be covered. Um, you know, it's it really is that, that you know, that, marrying up of what they say is going to be drought prepared and how you're going to do it through your active like you know that theme six that jeff right. was talking about the new actions implementations and the plan to improve the business through drought mitigation right. how's it going to be it does have to be permanent and it does have to be capital works so um yeah that's all right as long thank as you. it's in there <laughs> uh, that's great thanks sheree for clarifying that so, Sheree or Jeff, in your opinion, if someone was to develop a farm business resilience plan, and what what would that take from that plan? And I know each plan is going to be um, individually specific to the to the business. Could someone then take that plan and add in some, you know, some financial data, um, some business related data or whatever, and then look to um, build a business plan that they could take to their financial institution if they're looking for additional finance? Jeff, what are your thoughts, mate? 
Yeah, I think absolutely. I think it helps to demonstrate that producers have had a uh, holistic, holistic look at their business, um, assess the risks and come up with strategies to manage the risks. So combined with um, financial data and assuming that they meet the serviceability and security requirements for a loan, I think it it's a really useful document to help to demonstrate that they they have a clear direction and that they've assessed their risks where they want to go, um, and they're all on the uh, on a path towards that. What do you think? Should Beginning the nod. No, that's good. Thank you, Sheree. <laughs> I think that's that makes perfect sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Karen and, and Ian, I don't mean to belabor the point, but your your thoughts on that. Um, and Karen, particularly, I think with your business background, would you yeah, would you see that as probably a bit of a stepping point? Yeah, absolutely. And I think um like the main message is is to look at this um holistically, look at the big picture, the vision, where you want to be with your um, business. Have that in your resilience plan. Make sure you've considered all aspects of your business and then look at, well, what I, I think the trick um, would be for me if I was to be writing one of these is to actually choose my priorities as to what I actually needed funding yeah. for um, and the order in which I'd like to um, to to apply the funding or apply the action plan that I will um, will put into put into action as a result of analysing what I need to do. Um, I think it'll be an individual business decision as to what they want to spend um, or seek funding to assist them with, and they'll know um, what needs to be done first, second, third, and so on. Um, but I think that'll be the, the main trick to see um, what you need to spend dollars on and um, what you could possibly um, do without funding and um, and also what other assistance may be available that is outside of this as well. And um, I know there's several questions in there at the moment regarding the Rural Financial Counselling mm. Service. Um, so they might like to, um, you know, put some further information in chats as to, you know, how to access them. Um, and you're also um, remembering that there are quite a few private providers that you can access and you can apply. Remember the 2,500? Don't mm. forget that that's available prior as well to help you to um, to write that plan and um, consider your business planning and your activities. So remember you can use more than just one and that's what Cherie was um, explaining before. Thanks Karen. Um, Ian, anything you'd like yeah, to Yeah I was going to say I, I, look I, I think there's going to have to be a fair bit of iterative process with individual business as we go through this because the farm business resilience plan covers a scope about that and the mm -hmm. drought funding covers a scope about that. All right, so it's clearly not going to be sensible for a business to spend a month writing the best farm business resilience plan ever solely for the purpose of attracting drought funding. It's got to have right. other benefits as well. Right. And and the best example I can give from a practical point of view is one of the questions in there is about things like your WHS risk. Now, if I know for some businesses, this is actually going to be the first time they've actually systematically had mm. some questions and some thinking about that. And as I understand the drought, the plan doesn't say, yes, we've looked all that, and we've got all the solutions and this is all we're doing. But at least if you talk about it and say, okay, that's an issue we need to deal with and we are going to work on some plans to deal with that, which is a bit like a plan to make a plan. But the focus is on the drought support, but at least you need to look at the other risks as part of doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think some of that, you know, we're, this, is all, this is new to everybody that's on this call, including us. So I think to some extent there's going to be a bit of a learning uh, program to go through there for us as well. No, very, very good points, Ian. And um, yeah, it's you just jog something in my memory too to um, anyone that's been around government and been involved in structuring programs and rolling out programs knows um, that they're subject to review at some point. Uh, we own it are only in early days in terms of this, and the, you know the program will be reviewed at some point. Uh, so if it's not fit for purpose, if it's missing the mark or whatever, then we need to hear from people on that. 
um, we need to uh, then we would then sit down and take a look at uh, why it's not hitting the mark and to see if we could come up in discussions with industry groups um, you know how we can do it better how we can do it differently so that it does hit the mark and the other thing is uh, again with any of these programs given that we're talking about uh, about government funding is that programs are likely to get cut if they're not being utilized um, so I'd encourage people to get out there and utilize these programs um, you know they need to be able to demonstrate that um, you know we're getting good return on investment for them so what I'm jumping around here a little bit in terms of questions, but this one is a, a little bit related to um, what we were just talking about. Uh, and Cherie, I believe that you're probably best equipped to handle this, uh, given your flood hat and your drought hat that you're wearing currently. <laughs> We've had several growers who have been impacted by floods and previous natural disasters who have now taken off farm employment. Um, whilst rebuilding their farms. So they're not earning 50% of their income from their farm yet uh, or currently. Um, should they apply and explain their situation? It's a really, good, really good question. Yeah, um, they absolutely should. Um, what I'm, uh, you know, like I encourage people that you just show that, you know, in the past you have had that. So if it wasn't last year's financials or it's not going to be this year's financials, show the last year that was the, that in that situation. So it's, it's um, you know, it, it's easy for you to, you know, prove that that isn't, like this is a special circumstance, the special set of circumstances where you've had to go off farm to, you know, get the funds to live and rebuild but yeah. four years ago it might not have been that for you three years That's ago right. it might, last year it might not have been just put those financials right. in because you do have to show your financials when you do a pro yeah. uh, apply for them just put it in to show that you know that has been the circumstance under normal hmm. you know better conditions it's absolutely just put it in yeah nice thank you karen you, you, got your hand. you got a you got a question karen or a, or a comment Oh, I was just going to add to um, just talking about that business planning. Look, we definitely encourage people to reassess their business plans every year. Um, use the Hort 360 um, platform. We definitely, you know, we have got the farm business resilience module within that, uh, which is specifically designed for this program. But you, once you're in there, you can do any module you like. You can do the irrigation one. You can do the workplace health and safety one. These modules have been designed with the experts. Um, for example, the workplace health and safety one, we've just renewed that with the assistance of Work Cover Queensland and Workplace Health and Safety Queensland. We would encourage all growers, everybody in business to to review their plans annually, absolutely, and work with your accountants and solicitors on this. Um, so you should be doing this regardless of whether or not you're applying for a Rider grant or loan. Good additions. Thank you very much, Karen. Uh, the question here from William. Thank you, William. Uh, is financial counselling covered? In part, as in, I think, uh, as part of the planning. Yeah, I can take that one, Ted. Um, currently for the horticultural industry, existing clients of Real Financial Counselors are able to attend. So if they meet the hardship eligibility criteria, then there's no problems attending and getting support with this. But for people that don't meet the hardship eligibility criteria, then their support isn't available to the Real Financial Counselors. There is an existing, so just to clarify, there's an existing um, contractual arrangement with the Grazing Futures Livestock Business Resilience Program in which they have engaged the assistance of the Royal Financial Councillors to support businesses in the grazing industry. And as you highlighted earlier, uh, it's only early days in terms of this program. Um, it's a marathon, not a sprint. And so we're evaluating the program constantly. And so if there's a need for financial counsellors to be available to other industries in the future, then that will be assessed um, depending on how the program goes. Yep. So, but that's the current situation. Good on you, Jeff. Thank you. Uh, question here for you, Cherie, uh, from Lena. Uh, thank you, Cherie. Great overview. 
helped uh, take that little pat on the back for you. Well done. Can the grants and loans be used for new and innovative drought measures, or is it more for established and proven practices? Um, well, no. Um, new and innovative drought measures. That that's brilliant. Put it in. If it's part of the farm business resilience plan, you can explain it because. If it's new and innovative, you might need to explain what it is. But um, no, put it in. Absolutely, it's not just for more established practices. And you might want to take out some IP on it if it's that good. No, I'm joking, but um, <laughs> share it with industry. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, we're all into um, yeah, into new practices that it, uh, and new innovation that's going to deliver better outcomes, um, not only for the environment, but for producers as well. So yeah, great question. And this one's along a similar vein. Uh, the next question, would regenerating soil suffering from long fallow syndrome be eligible? Um, because it's for permanent capital. So um, yeah. that probably wouldn't fit into mm. that. But um, yeah, permanent permanent infrastructure, permanent capital infrastructure is what this is for. You're uh, on, you're on mute. What if they had to buy a new piece of equipment in order to do a particular practice? Uh, so new machinery is not something that's eligible. Um, I did in that really dry section of my presentation when I read that out. They are actually all on the guidelines too. What can be and can't be, it's, it is on those guidelines. But new machinery is um, and, and vehicles is, is part of that. Unfortunately, that is not eligible. Because when we... The, the lines are somewhat blurry in terms of what capital is. Uh, yeah, but permanent infrastructure capital. So um, it is blurry. I, I get that. And it is always um, my, if, if it's part of your farm business resilience plan, um, this is how I look at it. If it's part of your farm, farm business resilience plan and it, it's a drought mitigation strategy, you're going to do it anyway. So if the, if the drought preparedness grant can assist you to do your plan, then that's even better. But if it's something that you are going to do for drought mitigation anyway, and it doesn't quite fit into those guidelines, it might not, but it's probably something that you should and would do anyhow. Thanks, Sheree, for clarifying that. Karen, you had a comment or another question off the oh, back of that? Jen, another what if building on from that. So what if you are in drought and therefore the drought assistance loan, the emergency drought assistance loan, could you use the fuel and labour through that to do that, um, that soil regenerating work? Um, if it's part of your working capital, because it, if it's part of, so that, that whole emergency and that carry on drought um, loan is more about, you know, that everyday kind of th those practices that are everyday part of your business to carry on your business. So if it would be something that you would do under normal circumstances to regenerate your soil, then of course it makes sense, right? Yeah. And do you have to be in drought declared currently to get that one? No, no, no. You have to. You have. You do have to prove that you were adversely affected by drought. Whatever. However, which that's not going to be difficult if you've been, you know, if if you're, you know, adversely affected by drought, you just are. So, um, but you don't have to be drought declared moving forward. No. Thank you. So, Cherie, while you've while you've got the microphone, if you um, if you wouldn't mind, will the grant cover uh, the upgrade of existing infrastructure? Um. So. It, it doesn't. So replacement and upgrade of existing infrastructure isn't in there. Um, I have uh, I, I have had a chat about you know like something that's like a really antiquated, not um, you know water efficient, like let's say an irrigator or a you know an irrigation system that's really really antiquated, uses a far too much water, and you're looking to completely scrap that and replace an entire system, then that is something that, you know, could be looked at, but the, just the upgrading and the um, just upgrading and repair and maintenance and replacement of an existing infrastructure is not technically available, eligible rather. Okay, thank you. Uh, what about mixing equipment or, or things such as minimum till? Um, I'm going to take that one on notice. <laughs> I'm no, sorry. Yeah. Um, uh, 
I'm going to take it on notice. That's all I'm going to say at this point. <laughs> and I think the, the reality is some of this is, again, this is all new. Correct. So we're going to be testing the boundaries. You know yeah, that. That's right. Um, we'll test these assumptions, definitely. And, uh, you know, for instance, if somebody, uh, the member I spoke about earlier today, who's got a, a flood affected dam that they're now going to have to replace, it's whether that's new infrastructure or upgrading existing infrastructure is a bit, do I hold my head that way or do I hold my head that way? I have a comment on that. So dams are looked at slightly different. So dams, um, obviously putting in a brand new dam, digging a new dam is absolutely, but the, um, the uh, I, uh, not repairing, but the, you know, like making bigger of an existing is looked at as new. Yeah, so. That would be consistent. The old guidelines used to, for instance, fund dam desilting. Hmm. It was one of our frustrations. We couldn't get access to it. But, and I kind of hope that might survive into the new one. Um, I think your hope might be um, given a bit of a thumbs up. <laughs> good, good clarity. Thank you. Technically, again, that's made again, it bigger. Again, the thing is, it, it shouldn't be about the. Shouldn't be about the technology. It should be about the result. Okay, moving on. We're getting uh, we're getting close to the end of the session, but some great questions still coming in. So, Rebecca, thank you for your question. Are there benefit? And we touched on this a little bit earlier. Are there benefits to using FBRP when I apply for finance with uh, lenders other than Q Rider? Uh, definitely. Our thoughts are that if you've got a farm business resilience plan, it could form the cornerstone or you know the basis for a business plan that you could take to your uh, financial institution. Anything that shows that you've, uh, you know, you've got a, a risk management approach to your business, you've understand what the threats and opportunities are. Um, that, particularly on the back of uh, the Hain Royal Commission into 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 banking and financial institutions, um, just proves, as I said, that you understand your business. Um, and you probably, if you understand your business, in my mind, you bet you should be better able to be able to service your level of debt. Yeah, and certainly I've had members talk to me about, you know, they've gone to refinance mm. and the, uh, different institutions have said, um, uh, you know, where's your plan that shows what your top three business risks are? Yeah, correct. Uh, even simple stuff like that, it could help, not necessarily to the full extent of it, but mm. it, people in the banking industry will tell you pretty consistently if you if you do one of these well, it will stand you well when you are talking about financing. That's right. Good stuff. Thank you, Ian. Uh, another question. Can an, up, can an upstream or property with water allocations be purchased to maintain water security? Um, it's not for property purchase, uh, no. Okay, hopefully that clarifies that one. All right. That's the that's the end of the. Karen, you got another question? Comment. Oh, look, I just like to push it a little bit further. You know, so I think um, if if we then consider reconsider that question, if it was for perhaps a sustainability loan or something like that, Sheree, do you want to just talk about the difference there and the application of a loan such as that with regard to that question? Yeah, so um, an upstream property with water allocation purchase, obviously, because these loans are a maximum of $250,000, that is not going to cut it. But um, a sustainability loan, you know, potentially, depending, because there's a lot of eligibility criteria with a sustainability loan, and I could be here for another half hour talking mm. about that. But um, obviously, that has a greater scope. It's got a higher amount and, and under certain circumstances, depending on, you know, if that's increasing the viability of the business, then, um, you know, a sustainability loan and, you know, they have a demonstrated need for, you know, um, concessional lending. It could absolutely be something that um, goes hand in hand with it. But for this program, um, purchasing land is, is is not an eligible activity. But yes, a sustainability loan could potentially do it. <laughs> Thanks, and you could use that and a grant depending on what your farm business resilience plan was stating and what you're intending to do. To do, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So a, a good example would be, um, you know, if you were, 
Uh, well, somebody, somebody was talking about before a climate-controlled um, greenhouse, right? So they're going to cost a heck of a lot more than $250,000 too. So, you know, if that co-contribution, um, you know, that a sustainability loan can be the co-contribution to that to that um, drought preparedness grant. So um, absolutely, it doesn't need to, you don't have to have, if you want the drought, if you've done your FBRP and you've got an activity that is going to, you know, Put you in greater steed for dry conditions, then um, applying for the grant doesn't have to come along with one of our loans. It can it can be your own funds. You could have you know, and, and it's not it the the um the the grant itself isn't means tested. So you could have your own money sitting in a you know a, a term deposit sitting there ready to go, and that's the co contribution and the fifty thousand dollars or twenty five thousand twenty five percent of the activity costs can go through. So it doesn't need to be hand in hand, but it can be. Thank you, Sheree. We've got a couple of two or three minutes before uh, we wrap up the webinar. Uh, some great questions, guys. Uh, so we might just take this last one from Anthony. Uh, can a new machinery saving a lot of water uh, in a banana business? Would that be eligible? Uh, E.g. banana wheels system for washing? Um, so technically um machinery new machinery isn't something that it would be an eligible activity again it's one of the ones that are on the guideline as in what we can't do with the dpg the drought preparedness grant um but um you know it, 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 it like exactly the same as what ted was saying earlier before these things it, it's brand new so if, if there's if, if there's a you know, a reason that it, it should be included or that these things, they are ever evolving. But as it stands today, machinery is not included. Okay. Thank you, Cherie. So that, guys, they always say, I know it's a hackneyed phrase, but the, they say we save the best till last. And that's certainly been uh, the feature. We've, we've run four of these webinars. This is the fourth one today. And I must say that the audience today have come up uh, with the best participation uh, and some fantastic questions. So well done to everyone. Um, it's been great. All right, we're, uh, I'll just about wrap up the program now, but just in a little bit of closing, uh, you'll be forwarded a, a post-event survey. It'll come through in the next 24 hours or whatever. Um, please take some time to fill it out and complete that survey. Uh, we take any feedback, good, bad or indifferent. <laughs> uh, we're into continuous improvement, as we said, and we, we can't improve unless we you know, get that frank and fearless feedback. Um, so, the other thing too within that email that you'll get regarding the survey is that if you've got any questions that you would like us to direct to Ian, um, that you would like us to direct to Karen uh, or to DAF, uh, any of our speakers today, uh, please let us know and we'll answer those questions uh, or forward them on to Ian and Karen, as I said. Uh, if you want to contact DAF, uh, there's a number of different ways you can do that. Uh, via email, you can do it at drought at daf.qld.gov.au. Um, or you can phone the Customer Service Centre on 13 25 23. Uh, and there's quite a bit more information available at that uh, at the web address down the bottom. Uh, just finally, in closing, um, the reason why we want the feedback, apart from continuous improvement, is that in May and June, we're going to hit the road and do a number of uh, regional uh, drought forums. Uh, at this stage, I think we're planning to uh, meet producers face to face in about 10 or 11 localities and for the her uh, for the horticulture turf and nursery areas um, some of the localities that we're planning to go to uh, Bundaberg, Nambour, Emerald, Air, uh, Warwick and Mareeba. Um, so we'd love to see people there. Uh, if you've got some questions uh, that you know that have come out of today's session uh, that you didn't get a chance to ask or you think about it, uh, you know, over the next few weeks or whatever, we'd love to see you at the uh, at those regional drought forums. Once we've got those locked in, uh, we will put out quite a bit of information um, through Ian, uh, through Growcom. Uh, we'll let people know where those events are going to be held and when uh, and the timings around those. Uh, as I said, we'd love to see, you know, the, you know a, a lot of participation. I'd just like to thank my presenters today. Um, thank you very much, Ian and Karen. As I said, uh, both of you are fantastic and really, really value added to uh, to the presentation today. Um, thanks for sharing your time with us. Um, to the DAF team that have 
basically been with me most of the week in producing these webinars and rolling them out. You've done a fantastic job. Uh, thank you all very much for your effort. Everyone have a great evening. Take care and stay safe. Thank you very much for